Did you know that Pokemon was originally called Capsule Monsters? The initial concept was inspired by Japanese Gashapon machines, vending machines that supplied capsules containing collectible toys. Some early concept art even suggests that Pokemon were meant to be sold in shops, just like Gashapon toys. The name was changed from Capsule Monsters to Kapumon because of trademarking issues, but the name Pocket Monsters is what finally stuck. The first Pokemon games developed were Pokemon Red and Green. Development was long, which started in 1990 and ran all the way into 1996. This was partially due to the developers taking breaks to raise funds by working on other games like NES and Game Boy game Yoshi. Yoshi sold well and ensured the developers had the resources they needed to continue work on Pokemon. Funding issues came up several times during development and it seems lucky that Pokemon was ever released at all. The main man behind Pokemon was Satoshi Tajiri. He actually came up with the initial idea and pitched it to Nintendo. Though the game was initially rejected, Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, took interest in his idea. Miyamoto became a mentor of sorts to Tajiri, and to pay tribute, Tajiri added Satoshi to the default name list for the game's protagonist and Shigeru to the default name list for the rival in the Japanese games. In the code of the game, however, the names of the main character and rival are Yamaguchi, named after Wataru Yamaguchi, who is listed under the special thanks in the credits, and Ishihara, after Pokemon developer Tsunagatsu Ishihara, who is currently the president of the Pokemon Company. In the special Japanese edition of Pocket Monsters Blue, the names were changed to references of Game Freak and Creatures Incorporated. Interestingly, the English versions of the game kept this tradition. The default names in the code were changed to Niten and Sony, referencing the competition in the console market between PlayStation and Nintendo 64. And, speaking of Nintendo 64, there was once a fully-fledged Pokemon game in the works for this console titled Pocket Monsters RPG. Not to be confused with Pocket Monsters 64, which was the name given to Pokemon Stadium during development. All we know about the game is that Pokemon's creator, Tajiri, was involved, and comments were made by Miyamoto suggesting that it would possibly share the art assets with Pokemon Stadium. It's unknown why the project was cancelled. Although Pokemon RPGs did come to the GameCube, those games were not developed by Game Freak, and Tajari did not appear in the credits. Ken Sugimori created a lot of iconic concept art during the development of Pokemon Red and Green, but one of these pieces seems a little out of place. This art portrays a three-way showdown between the game's protagonist, Red with Bulbazar, the rival character, Blue with Charmander, and a girl with Squirtle. Since the characters Red and Blue were integral to the game's story, you'd think that this girl held some significance. In the Pokemon Adventure manga, the girl is revealed to be a trainer called Green. Green stole Professor Oak's Squirtle in the manga, which links her back to the original concept art. With the release of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, the original games were updated so that you could choose to play as a boy or a girl. The female protagonist was named Leaf and bared a striking resemblance to Green. Another thing to consider is that according to developer Jirichi Masuda, Pokemon Black and White contained elements meant to replicate the feel of the original Pokemon games, so we know that the games were on the minds of the developers while they were making Black and White. One thing that Pokemon Black and White had was a three-way dynamic between the main character and two rivals instead of just one. A girl named Bianca and a boy named Charon. These connections seem to suggest that Green was intended to be playable in the original Pokemon games as a female protagonist like Leaf, or possibly that the three-way rival dynamic used in Black and White was an idea intended for the original games. In Generation 1 Pokemon games, you can actually fish in statues located in gyms and Indigo Plateau, and even catch Pokemon inside them. You can find Magic Carps with the Old Rod, Poliwags, Goldeens with the Good Rod, and Krabbies, Psyducks, and more Goldeens at a higher level with the Super Rod. Although the Super Rod only seemed to work in the Cerulean City Gym, this also only works on larger statues in the game, not smaller ones. You can surf on statues too, but no wild Pokemon will appear while you're surfing. A similar glitch appears in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 where the player can surf in the tree in the Pokestar Studios area. 
There's evidence suggesting that the psychic type in Pokemon is weak to bug, ghost, and dark type because they are all basic fears, and fear can manipulate the mind. The ability rattle raises the user's speed when hit by bug, dark, or ghost type Pokemon, implying they've been shaken up or scared, strengthening this idea. In the Japanese version of the game, dark type is named evil type, so the idea can apply there too. Gengar has several connections to another Pokemon, Clefable. They have the same basic body shape and Clefable's hair, wings, and tail are in the same places as Gengar's spikes. Clefable is a normal type and Gengar is a ghost type, meaning their stab attacks can't touch each other. They're thought to be some of the earliest Pokemon created, and Gengar is said to be a shadow Pokemon. The name Gengar itself could come from the word doppelganger, which means someone's double. It's almost as if Gengar is Clefable's shadow. Another creepy thing about Pokemon is that when Paris evolves into Parasect, it's actually being engulfed by the fungi growing on its back. The fungi takes over the Pokemon's body and becomes the control center. Parasect is left zombified, which is illustrated by its eerie lack of pupils. Well, that's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com, and if you like this video, check out our other videos. Also, if you want to check out what I do, click the link to watch How to Make Pokeball Cookies. I make nerdy nemmies every Tuesday.